this will get them through the weekend. It's cooling. I'm going to jump on the roof and clean up my messes up there. Um, it's getting late already. It is 834 on Friday night. Uh, as usual, one thing leads to another, right? This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Okay, I think that uh, I'm probably going to have my work cut out for me. I'm on a walk-in freezer right now. And I'm not kidding with you, the customer says that the previous company um, has had nothing but problems since they installed the equipment. Continuously have had to come back and uh, she's trying to get me documentation to help me to understand exactly what it is that they've done. So I walked up to it right now. This is a QRC system, the quick response controller in the left right there. Uh, there's currently no power to the QRC. Uh, I need to kind of figure it out from there. I have not got my meter out yet, but I noticed there's a bunch of ice over here, but this is what's concerning to me. They've got SO cords or SJ cords. Oh, I think that's the main power, I think. Okay, I was tripping out thinking, what are they doing here? Huh, this is interesting. Yeah, so looks like we got a switch on the back wall. I haven't flipped anything yet. This panel was literally laying right here. So when it comes to me being a second opinion, you kind of got to undo what other people have done. You've kind of got to look really, really hard at the big picture to try to unravel what it is that potentially they might have made a mistake on. So that way you can then find the actual problem. So the coil looks to be frozen up back there. Definitely. There's a bunch of ice back in this side. There's ice all in here. Um, I need to open that up and see what's going on in there. All right. So I've got an SJ cord or SO cord and they're only using the black. And then they've got another one and they're only using the black. What the hell's going on here? And they are piggybacking terminals like crazy. What the heck is up? According to the schematic, main power should be coming in on H2 right here and J. Where the heck are they bringing it in? What are we doing here? J is up here, so that looks like maybe one leg, and then H2 is here. But why are they using two separate cords? I don't understand. Interesting, and it says there should be a jumper. I'm just trying to make sense of this. So there should be a jumper between F2, three and H2. What are they doing here? Why is there a jumper between H2 and F2? Oh no, so that's it. Yeah, that's it. Hmm, okay. Well, we're gonna look a little bit further. All right, I walk up to the equipment. Uh, the cover's already off, so I don't know if the customer's been up here. This is what I see. That's a low temp scroll. It's got the liquid injection. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to open everything up so we can get in here. It looks like all the screws are missing too, so someone's just been working on this probably. Um, so just doing a visual inspection, fan blade spin, compressor's warm, it's not hot. Um, there's a defrost clock, which there shouldn't be, but they don't have any defrost in it, so it's not being used. I will eliminate that from the picture. Looks like they eliminated the time delay too, which is good because you shouldn't have a time delay on a QRC or a Intelligent unit. Um, hmm. Okay, well, we're gonna get in and check voltage and start there. All right, um, there's a couple things going on here. It's not the end of the world, but according to Heatcraft's installation instructions, when you have the QRC system, you're not supposed to power it from the equipment on the roof. Um, you're supposed to have a dedicated circuit, but I will say, I've installed many QRC systems and powered them from the roof, okay? So I'm not saying that is our problem. I'm just saying according to their instructions, you're not supposed to, okay? But I too have installed many that way. Now, um, it almost looks like that compressor's been replaced, but I don't know if that's the case. Okay, so we're gonna check three phase power. We're just gonna check on the top of the contactor. We've got three phase. I'm gonna go ahead and check the other legs. That's line two, and that's line one to three. So we have 2083 phase, all right? And it looks like, I'm, I'm making an assumption here that we're sending power down. These two wires, they're wired into the time clock. 
but they're not being used as a time clock. So basically, the evaporator power should be right here. That should be the evaporator power. So the evaporator should have power and it doesn't. Well, or at least the board is blank. So a couple things I wanna do, just to simplify all this crap, I wanna rip this time clock out, rip that time delay out. Even though it's not being used, they've got it unhooked, which is good. The previous company did right on that. Um, I wanna rip it out just so that people don't get confused by that. Um, but yeah, I need to go downstairs then because I need to check power at the coil and see if we have voltage at the coil. All right. So if we go between, uh, let's see if we can get in here. It's supposed to go between H2 and F, or in uh, H2 and J, but I jumped between F2 because that's where there's a jumper. We have no voltage. So we've got no voltage coming into this coil. So we need to look over there at that switch. Feel actuation, but not doing anything hmm okay well I wonder if I need to get rid of this ice maybe we got a broken wire behind the ice it's interesting oh wow yeah this is a mess back there all right I wish I could show you guys the invoices that I just read holy moly for for this customer again I don't want to knock the other company but um, I realized that there was some problems and I went up on the roof and I realized that I saw that voltage was, it looked like it was coming from on the roof. Well, in fact, it's actually not. But when they first installed the equipment, yes, they were powering it from the roof. They did have that defrost clock in the system. And uh, that was some of the original problems that they had. I would have been reading through their invoices. And it's funny too, because the customer was charged for all that, which is a trip because they made an installation error. I don't like to talk crap. All right, but anyways, so reading some of that stuff, again, I haven't even gone through anything yet. I found like one of the last invoices that said they finally got a hold of Heatcraft Tech Support and it looked like they'd been talking to a bunch of different people at Heatcraft Tech Support and someone finally figured out that the evaporator did not have its own dedicated power supply and they powered it dedicated. Okay, so we are powered and you notice that we're in the tripped position right now. So that's why my evaporator is not running and I have three phase on the roof. So what we're gonna do at this point is go ahead and power this down and we're gonna defrost that coil and then try to see if we can find some sort of an electrical short or see what's going on. Maybe the ice pull the wire nut off, who knows? So I'll get that in there first. All right, so we got uh, a lot of ice in this thing. And it's very interesting how there's more ice on the left and more ice on the right than there is in the middle. But it's also interesting how there's a ton of ice in the drain pan on the left and a ton of ice in the drain pan on the right. One thing I've seen before is people not doing the drain right. It kind of looks like it. See how there's like a pitch going up? And uh, if there's too much stress, the drain pan can actually get pushed up in the middle. That's very interesting. Okay, well, we need to de-ice it first. So we're gonna get this de-ice. Remember, we've got power off, so I'm gonna pull the motors out. We gotta be careful, because things are gonna get wet, but it kinda sucks, but we'll get this all. Oh, and look at, we got different motors, too. So I walked into their beer walk-in because I'm trying to trace out where the drain is going. And it's actually keyed into the beer walk-in right there. Then it runs over, keys into the walk-in cooler right over here between those wine bottles and then goes down to the drain and it's barely draining. See, I've got a full drain pan and that's all I'm getting out of that drain. So we've got a plugged up drain too. Look at this stuff. All those big old chunks are falling out. Just for me hitting it, knocking all the big old chunkers out. So there's a bunch of stuff stuck in that P-trap causing it to plug up the drain. All right, I noticed that if I grab this and pull down on it, it seems like it drains faster. And my theory is, is that this is binding and pushing up on the drain pan. Because when I pull down on it, it seems to drain. I can hear it bubbling. So, what a mess, what a mess. So, yeah, it's what I think it is. First off, this, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but this is going up when it's leaving, right? And what happened was when they they had a pre-existing coil. I know what they did because um, I've had my employees do this before too and 
you know, took me a minute to figure it out, but they didn't line up the drain line. You need to, when you're doing one of these coils, you really need to line up that drain line 100%, okay? Um, and it's, yeah, it's actually not that bad. I don't, maybe they're trying to do something with a 45, but also the other problem is, is that the drain line's coming up at a weird angle. So it's awkward at that, okay? But if you look, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but when I pull down on this, there's a lot of flex. Like this drain pan should not be being pushed up. See, it's being pushed up. Like it, it's pulling down. And when I pull down on it, it drains and all the water drains out. But without it, the middle is high and the sides are low, which would make sense. Again, I'm, I'm guessing right now as to why there's so much ice on the left and so much ice on the right because the middle of the pan is being pushed up. So any drain or any condensation during defrost goes to the left and to the right until it gets high enough to go down the drain. Also, you can tell from the backs of here that this thing has been iced up a million times. And that's also reflected in all the previous invoices that I read is that they've iced this thing up so many times. It almost looks like, I think this is the original motor. And I think these two have been replaced, the left and the right, which would again, makes sense so all right well i need to finish defrosting but i'm trying to figure out how to make this drain faster i don't have a union with me right now but i kind of want to pop this and just let it drain into a bucket temporarily i ended up finding a union but this is what i'm talking about i broke it free and all i did was just pull down just a little bit there was no water draining before and now look at all that water now i need to get that because i don't want water draining on the floor but that's what's going on that drain is messed up all right, I ended up finding a union, so I'm gonna put a water hose on this temporarily and drain it out to the floor sink and then finish de-icing it. Look at how silly this is. I literally made a chingus. I found all the pieces so I could drain because I'll worry about fixing that in a little while, but the biggest thing is I wanna get this defrosted so I can figure out where the electrical short is. So I, I have these pieces already for blowing out other drains, so I just connected them and ran the drain to a hose, ran it outside. That way I can defrost this coil, get a good pitch on it, and then, uh, figure out where the shorts at. Before I couldn't put any water in the drain pan for more than you know five second bursts. Now it's instantly draining out and we're not even plugging up at all. So we'll get this defrosted really quick. Look at how much damage there is from ice. It's been consistently icing up for a very long time on the left and the right. I already de-iced behind that but this is what's scary over here. There's a, a transformer back there that gets high voltage and steps it down to low voltage. It's tucked back behind there and it's completely encased in ice and I have to defrost it in case it, you know, and get it all wet. All right, well, they had already changed it so it was barely even in there, but this thing is completely full of water. Uh, I wonder where the electrical short's at. Bet you anything, it's the transformer. Um, yeah, so I gotta defrost it. All you gotta do is remove two screws. Just gotta be smarter than the average bear. Um, so we're ready to put this guy back together and I might as well just change the transformer, I guess. Man, I only have a 75 VA with a reset. Hopefully uh, the control voltage can handle that. I think it can though. Yeah, it should be fine. Well, it started up. Well, I powered it up, I should say. But it's interesting because it says off and it sounds like I can hear refrigerant going through which isn't good. Um, but looks like the transformer might be okay tonight. I don't know. We'll have to see. I just powered it up just to see what would happen. Oh, well, that's weird. This one's running and this one's running, but this one's not. So yeah, we've got a bad motor. Well, I went to go unplug this ECM motor and the wire just came off in my hand. Now, that's no good because it goes up into the motor and it's no bueno. So I ripped out the defrost clock and the time delay. Um, I don't think these wires are doing anything, but I need to wire net them just to be safe. Uh, I got a zip to cut a couple zip ties. So this is done. I'm gonna go downstairs and finish up down there. All right, my equipment is running. I ran into a lot of problems. Um, I did a major repair on the drain line. The drain line was totally pitched. They had this thing there somehow before. Also, it's pretty plugged up. There's a bunch of gunk in there. But the drain line was pitched in the wrong direction. Um, I was able to bend the stuff behind the wall, put a massive pole on that, brazed on or soldered on this uh, union, 
got that. Went to go put the drain line heater back on and the drain line heater shorted out. And I'll show that to you right now. As I was taking the drain line heater off, I felt it crackling and you can see it's exposed. So we can't put that back on. So I have to come back for that. And we had a broken fan bracket and a bad fan motor right here. Totally broken, shorted. You can see it's burnt. And that went up into the motor. So I went ahead and replaced that. There's still a lot more to come on this. I'm not done. Uh, that SA, SO, SJ cord, whatever, is a joke. I don't know why they're using just the black wire from each cord. Um, but this will get them through the weekend. It's cooling. I'm going to jump on the roof and clean up my messes up there. Um, it's getting late already. It is 8.34 on Friday night, uh, as usual. One thing leads to another, right? All right, we are back, and we're going to finish this guy up. So the drain pan was iced up like I thought it was going to be. And it actually blew apart because it froze and expanded the copper without the drain line heater. Even with the pitch that we had, it still blew it apart. So we're gonna repair that. And then we're also, I brought another person with me today. So we're also going to properly put a heater on there, insulate it, but we're gonna blow out all the drain lines because they're interconnected between the walk-in cooler, the beer cooler, and the walk-in freezer. So we're gonna blow them out, make sure that's all good new fan bracket and then we're gonna get to the bottom of all that weird electrical crap going on in there um, all kinds of issues up here sensors are too close to the heater looks like one had shorted out right there so it's a mess but we're gonna get to the bottom of it all right now I ended up going to the other side pulling it out of the T because they're using a shark bite fitting over there sliding it in making it one solid piece coming up no leaks we blew out the drain so now we're gonna wrap the drain line heater so I had a six foot drain heater it's way too big but it's perfect size so I didn't have to use the cut to fit stuff so uh, I can promise that drains not gonna ice up that's way over wrapped but that's fine we got a nice piece of insulation and then we're gonna run it on over properly all right this is so unbelievably frustrating this expansion valve is leaking by I can hear it I'm physically listening to this thing hiss as I'm working on it so there's something stuck in the expansion valve and it's leaking by. Good grief, when is this thing gonna stop? It's like one thing after another, good gosh. All right, well I'm gonna finish with the drain line. I've got it insulated right here and I just need to run the heater cable properly in through a knockout and get it connected. All right, we've got, I pulled the valve apart and I defrosted it real quick and yeah, it's, uh, you can still see it's, it's feeding refrigerant through the valve and I can hear it you can just hear it hissing and we've got no power applied this unit should be pumped down um, one thing I will do though to be honest with you actually before I do that we need to check something because we actually just shut off the breaker so I guess theoretically look at that man everything is melted in this thing theoretically it could be that it, it never closed when it was shut off I unhooked all the electrical cord this S J S O I always forget what this stuff's called, but unhooked it all and we're getting rid of it. We're just going to use one cord running over to the other side. I'm going to clean all this up. And then there's several sensors that look like they were touching defrost heaters and stuff. Hopefully that's not shorted out really bad. We might have to get a new suck cable. Like, it's just such a mess in here, man. Everything, one thing after another. Uh, one of these sensors, this one right here, I think was rubbing up against the defrost heater, but there's an extra sensor in here. So we're just kind of cleaning it up and redoing all the electrical, getting it from down low, gonna run it up high. All right, so we put everything back together, uh, tried to zip tie everything up, made sure nothing is near the heaters, okay? Uh, put a new sensor for the uh, suction temperature sensor which there was an extra one in the unit and they'd been charging the, you know, whatever. Anyways, uh, ran that SJ cord up on top up there, out of the way, made one single cord connection and I'll show you guys over there. So we're putting the unit back together now and then we're gonna test to see if this valve is leaking by. All right, and over here, I got rid of those SJO cords, whatever, ran them up top, nice and clean, two wires coming in. Um, drain line heaters wired in, we just need to tape these seams right here. I made sure that everything is secured and not going to touch any of the brackets down below because there was stuff. Made sure everything's nice and good. Okay, please don't blow up in my face. Now, we just turned power on. The reason why they turned on like that was because when I replaced the evaporator fan motor, I put in a PSC and not an ECM. So that's why that happened like that. Now, um, what we need to do, okay, cool. 
So we pump down. Shouldn't be pulling in a vacuum like that. The pressure control is probably out of whack, so we'll have to adjust that, but we need to make sure that it actually shuts off. So we'll have to check that out on the roof, but okay, nothing blew up, so that's a plus. We are still working on getting the fan motors out, but what I'm doing is pre-wetting the condenser. And because this is a micro channel, we're gonna use the Refrigeration Technologies Viper HD cleaner. And I'm just gonna spray it on there and then let it sit while we're still working on the fan motor. Uh, the Viper HD cleaner, the really cool thing is, is that it's micro channel safe, so it's not gonna damage the metal, not gonna hurt anything. Unlike some of the other cleaners that you gotta worry about. So we're just gonna let this sit, do its job, and then we will, uh, Rinse it all off from the inside out in a minute. Yeah, we're getting it, because this thing is really bad, so we're getting it from the outside, or from the inside out. And you can just see the stuff, like it just comes through nasty. And that's that Viper cleaner working really good, because this thing had a lot of grease on it. And it's just, you know, making it so it pounds it off. But just remember, rinse it really well. Even though it's metal safe, you still want to rinse all the cleaner off, and then also uh, pat the condenser down when you're all done. All right, let's go ahead and compare. So I'm looking at 42 degree or 42 PSI and the walk-in says 42 PSI for the suction pressure. Let's scroll back at what the superheat's at. 13 degrees superheat. Yeah, and mine's at like low right now, but the valve's opening and closing. So yeah, so I think we're okay. We're gonna watch it for a bit. Yeah, our superheat's accurate. It's just trying to pull down right now, so the valve's opening and closing, but yeah, we're looking good. So we're gonna watch this thing come down in temp, probably take a lunch, but yeah, we're looking all good now. Drain line's fixed. All of that, guys, is because of this drain line. All right, um, it's just like one thing after another. They're saying that the door heater's not working, right? So the door heater comes through there. They've got some SJ cord in there too, right? Which I'm not really technically supposed to do that, but I'm not bitching too much about that. But I open this up because I have no power at the door heater and I'm looking in here and I'm starting to get sketched out right now because they have white wires ran in with the ground wires. So it kind of looks like they are piggybacking up trying to find a neutral using a ground. All right, this is a door heater circuit. This isn't that hard to figure out. These guys, I don't even know what they're doing here. There used to be a twist timer in the wall that would disconnect the number four wire and shut off the old evaporator coil. They tried to use that wire. If you see, they've got a ground wire going to common for the door heater. Coming up into here, I, I don't even know. This is ridiculous. All right, I got it figured out. Um, we rewired it in here and what it ended up being was there was a bad neutral in here. Uh, there was an extra neutral, I, it wasn't working, it wasn't good, so I hooked it up to the neutral for the light circuit, an actual neutral, and actually grounded it, and everything is working right. We have current draw on the door frame heater, so we're good. We're going to start this uh, evaporator back up again. All right, this was another one that just kicked my butt. I mean, you know, when I first got there, the original service call, the customer had said, Actually, the facilities director had reached out to me and said, hey, they've been having a lot of problems with the previous company. They've worked on this thing a ton. Could you please go and do us a favor? It's always go and do us a favor. But anyways, I went out there and the first thing I did was kind of ask the general manager on site, like, hey, what's been happening? And she rolled her eyes and was like, and told me the story. And then I, you know, again, she's telling me things that just didn't quite make sense. So I had asked her for the invoices. I said, hey, can you give me the invoices so I can read through them? And she gave me a book of invoices. She'd saved every one. And when I sat down and started reading those invoices, I literally looked at her and said, what the hell did I get involved in? And she said, I know. And, you know, it was just nuts. So the previous company had been here multiple times on install. And what's crazy is in their invoices, they contradict themselves and incriminate themselves so many different times. Um, they installed the equipment, and then a couple invoices later, after it wasn't working, they said, oh, we found out that it wasn't didn't have the right power coming to the unit because it needs a dedicated circuit. Well, they installed it, right? So they didn't catch that on install. Obviously, they didn't read the install manual, okay? But again, I, I even said in the video, I've done that before, and the systems will work fine. Okay, so take that out of the picture. 
Then in their invoices, they said they found out that there was two defrost clocks, meaning the um, the QRC board has built-in defrost, and they had left the defrost clock in the condensing unit on the roof. Okay, that was their install mistake. They also indicated that tech support told them to remove the time delay. Again, their install mistake. Um, then they said that they couldn't figure out why the evaporator fan motors kept or why it kept icing up and they decided to change a circuit board again the circuit board i'm kind of i don't know it, none of that stuff makes sense but all together the previous company changed us from what i know they changed two evaporator fan motors they changed a circuit board they changed all the sensors i don't think they changed an expansion valve but i think they changed all the sensor wires and the cables going to the expansion valve um after the fact, they unhooked the defrost clock on the roof. They unhooked the time delay on the roof. They, what else did they do? Um, there was something else they did too. Oh, they changed the, the low voltage transformer. Um, and, and, and it's just all of it, guys. All of these problems were because the drain was not pitched right in the first place. Their problems with it icing up all the time were because the drain was not pitched right and it was pushing up and causing the left and the right evaporator. You saw the damage on that evaporator coil on the left and the right side because it kept icing up because the drain wasn't pitched right. All of this because they did not pitch the drains right. My goodness gracious. Now, I don't... <laughs> I'm biting my tongue trying not to name the company because it's driving me nuts, but this is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I am dumbfounded. The amount of times they were out to that restaurant and on top of that, the amount of bills that were given to the restaurant that they have paid. We're talking thousands of dollars in bills that they paid. Holy moly. This is nuts. Like I'm, I'm just completely dumbfounded guys. Um, I don't mean to sound cocky, but when I walked away from this call, after finding all that stuff, I just, I can't help but think I don't make enough money from this stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm thankful that I have work and stuff, but like, seriously, this is insane. Then they asked me as I was getting ready to leave to look at the walk-in freezer door on the same unit that I was working on because they said that it's icing up around the door. And then I find that the wiring is all jacked up in that too. Their take, they've got a neutral wire ran to a ground wire. Like, what are these guys doing? Uh, I am just dumbfounded. And guys, okay, benefit of the doubt, maybe they just had one bad service tech. No, there was probably five or six different service techs. I, their names are all on the invoices at the other company. Five or six different techs that have worked on this equipment. Holy moly. Like, I, I, I don't have words. It's nuts. This is the kind of crap I have to deal with, you know, like I, I appreciate it. And, you know, when I'm all done, it's fun to look back and reflect. But you got you can't help but be extremely frustrated when you get called out on an emergency service call on a Friday night and find out that the previous company has been working on this for the last year to year and a half. Consistently, you know, that is frustrating, extremely frustrating, like, but but hey. I guess I need to be more thankful that I have work and that people trust me to fix things, I guess, you know, like, huh. All right. Well, uh, I'll definitely be talking about this more on my live stream Monday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I really, really appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, if uh, I keep saying this all the time, but if you guys are considering any tool purchases, please consider supporting the channel. If you're going to purchase something, check out True Tech Tools if you like their prices. Use my offer code big picture one word to save 8% on your order. It'll help to support the channel because I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, they'll give me a commission just for driving you guys to their website. Um, I purchase a lot of stuff from there, but price shop. And you know, if you choose to go with them, then just use my, my offer code if you don't mind. Okay. Really, really appreciate it. And we will catch you guys on the next one.